Okay, let's jump into it today. We are finally to get to the point where we can start talking about solids. Two points or two areas to pick up solids. Top of solid menu, second section of the solid menu, and this guy down here. I typically pull from these just because they're a little bit faster and I don't know, you're gonna find your own working flow that'll be effective. But cubes, I don't really think we should talk anything about cubes. If you want to rebuild a cube, that's great. But it's not going to let you. Maybe because it's so simple. Let me see if we can uh, add control points. Nope. So if you want to do a cube, you have just that. A cube. Like most things, we're going to come back and do a, a section on smaller details. This is a smaller detail on doing a radius to edge. The best time to do a radius edge is early on in the uh, design process. So I'm going to solid fillet the edge. I'll see all the edges that I want to be rounded over. My input is one. Let's change it to three. There we go. That's nice. But if you try to, Rhino is not the best program for putting radius edges or chamfers on stuff. So if you want to do that, this is uh, the most opportune time. I want to throw a chamfered edge on it just for fun. Everybody, everybody jump on this. Three, go for it. There we go. Everything looks better than rendered view. All right. Cubes, those are no surprise to you. Spheres, and after you did your project where you deform something, how do you make a four point sphere? This is kind of. Look at all the control I can have on making a sphere. Just when you're making a sphere, be knowledgeable on where your north poles and south poles are because it affects how you are able to rebuild. So the guys on the outside around our equator are easier to mess with than this guy up top. And this starts and stops. So spheres are spheres, and that's how you deform them. I told you about that. Ellipsoids, think of an ellipse, then put a three-dimensional aspect to it. You can also deform these. So if you want to start out with more of a shape instead of having going to your, I mean, you can make these from spheres. You take it and transform it into that shape. But if you want to skip one or two steps, that's how. Cone, ah, cylinder, sorry, cylinder first, base, height. Not to be confused with tube, which is very similar other than you get to select your wall thickness. But if I wanted to make a tube from a cylinder, I'm going to copy paste this. Transform it, make it a little bit bigger. And when you're going to Boolean union and Boolean difference, you need a little bit of overhang. And I'm going to run the difference command. When you want to keep, when you want to get rid of, there we go. We have two tubes. Truncated cone. Now so lets me adjust the taper, the taper for Faber. Same thing, if you wanted to adjust this and put a chamfer or <clears throat> a radius edge, this is the time to do it. Pyramid makes just that. A pyramid, beautiful. But it gives you also the options to change the sizes or the, the number of sides from my pyramid. So, nice. You want to go more pyramids of Giza. 
style. Start with the square. There we go. Any other options? You tell me I can have a star pyramid with four points. That's quite fascinating. Hmm. All right. So there's pyramids from spheres. Paraboloid. Such a fun word to say. It's almost like a uh, a squid. Jellyfish could work. But if you're familiar with the the revolve command. That's the easy one to make. Profile, sweep 360. Pipe. I showed that one a while back. Just to recap real fast. If I want to make a pipe around this curve, it lets me choose my start point, my finish point, and everything in between. This one's gonna be real messed up. Sure, let's take that. You could break that thing right in half. That's incredibly small. All right, that's the pipe command. Let's bring this back. There's one called slab. I'm not a big fan of it because I don't know. Maybe I just don't use uh, what it's good for frequently enough. Unless you set an offset. And I want an offset that's bigger than one. Let's just 10. And then extrude it. Just like pouring a concrete slab, I, I figure. If I wanted to make that and I didn't know about that property, I would have done offset curve, connect, connect, and then do extrude planner curves. Similar to what I'm fixing to do. Is there anything else I need to touch on before? The Taurus. Everyone loves the Taurus. The Ford Taurus. America's most dependable car. They're just fun. I don't know why I like inner tubes or donuts. Text. Mm. I'll take text on another day because in uh, Rhino 5 for Windows, text works fine, but my last update of Rhino for the Mac version, they hadn't installed text. So I'll show you a way around that and you can put in custom text because you're kind of limited to what you have in your library. City Blue, I want something kind of has uh, cramps. Man, I don't know who built this library, but these are some crazy fonts. I just want something kind of bold. That looks German, let's do it. And you can have it come out of curves, you can have it come in surfaces, you can make it come out as a solid. But we'll play more around with text once I show everyone how to import into their, their software. Extrude planner curve. Okay, so if I was going to make a slab as we did a second ago, I would take my curve, offset my curve. 14 units? Sure, why not? I would connect them using my curve tool, my straight line tool. And from this point, I would do cert, no, solid, extrude planner curve straight. And then I have the same output that I got earlier. So if you can find a really good way to use slab, I'd love to know because I haven't come across it yet. Extrude surface, you can get in the solid menu. You can also get it in the surface menu. Extrude surface. Ah, okay, I understand now. I was thinking about it incorrectly. I'm going to go borrow a surface from a sphere. I just want a, uh, a portion of the hemisphere. And I'm going to cut it with a triangle. Is that too large? I believe it is. Back it off a little bit with my 3D scale. I'm going to rotate this up so I have a good cutting angle. All 
All right. What I want to do, <clears throat> take this curve, extrude it inside. Good at that angle. And I'm going to do either trim or split because I like split better. I'll use that one. So that object with this object. I want that one. So I have a, a curved triangle shape. So from now, I can do extrude surface. And I don't like that direction. Let's come from the origin. So now I have a printable solid. I could round or radius the edges. But it does leave me with the input that I have, that the original surface. It doesn't delete that. I haven't used surface to boundary, flat edge. These only work when you have a solid. I'll show you the difference between a fillet, fillet surface and a fillet edge really fast. In between the two, I would prefer using the fillet under the solids menu over the fillet in the surface menu. And this is why surface fillet this surface to that one so it's radius of one I'm gonna come back I'm gonna give it a five so I can get a good view this is what it will do I'm only telling it to fillet from this one to this one it doesn't take into account the other surfaces that are around so I can keep on going but then I've got a, a boo-boo here that needs to be fixed if I would like to avoid that issue I come to the solid menu and then do fillet edge. Put this at five so we have similar. You see how it takes to account the other pieces? Similar issue. And if I want to avoid that issue outright, I can get this pretty end cap. Don't be stuck in these. These can be a headache. You can fix them, but it takes time because you've got to come in and get this curve, this curve, this curve, and then you can do edged curves to fix it. But if you want to save time, have your shape be a solid, and you'll be good. Anything else I want to show you all from this one today? Solid editing tools. I'll show you the theory behind move edge, which is pretty neat, but I have not found a practical purpose for it. If I want to move this edge, I just move the edge. If I want to move that one, I just move it. So you can get some quick complexity. But it has to be as you see it. Let's I'm going to try to push it real fast and see if either A, it won't work, or B, while well, I shut the computer down. Difference, keep, get rid of. And let's ask if it will help me move this hole. Make a hole, no. It wanted to do exactly what I just did. All right, so scratch that. So now you know what the, the solid menu has within it. Let's, uh, let's play around with these shapes a bit more. Sure, why not? And why can't I turn on poly surfaces even though it's a solid? This is more theory. What's the difference between this and a sphere? Mm-hmm. There's a flat surface and a rounded surface, which means we have how many surfaces? Two, which is more than one, which makes it? Yes. Since we can't deform poly surfaces, I'll get rid of that, and I can come fix it later. So now we can come here, rebuild, add control points. I have an idea what I'm going to do. 
I want to select, actually that's too many points for what I'm wanting to attempt. I'm fixing to start integrating the transform tools with your solids and I don't know, just things get more exciting. What else can I was gonna say, control points on. Uh, I need a, no, no, I just messed up. These, these, these. I wonder if it will let me select everything within my U. Okay, I didn't want to do that. Redo. I want it to help me select everything in my V. No, fun. You know what I could do that I forgot about? That lasso? I want all these guys. Not that one, but. Guess the old school way of selecting will just work in this situation. And I also wonder if it will let me group. Nope. Because I don't want to come back and select these later because what I'm fixing to do might or might not work. I'm going to transform some of these control points, but not all of them. That's fun. and the rest of these I might not have to use uh, control points for this next operation I want to put a twist on it so transform twist from my base to the top or slightly above the top where does it want me to start and then I can start twisting you see how the bottom's not twisting as much as the top the difference between twisting and spinning. Woo -hoo -hoo. See how complicated that got? Well, let's, let's say this is too complicated. I know it's going to shut down my, my weak PC. How do I make this thing simpler? Yeah? There you go. Rebuild. Let's keep these around 20. Okay, so similar shape, but easier to deal with. And just for fun, I mean, this is one of my favorite parts of the program is that I get to adventure around and try things. If it doesn't, it's still okay. It has some visual interest, but I guarantee that thing is not going to print like that. So if I wanted to make this a manufacturable saw, I'd have to do some work, but that's not so bad. If I wanted to close this thing off really fast, I'm going to show you a little shortcut that you'll need every once in a while. I'm going to grab a point. No. I guess that could work too. I want the point roughly in the middle of this object. And I'm going to go solid, extrude, curve to point. Here's my curve. There's my point. And the reason why I put it there is so I could snap to it using the point that O snaps. There we go. So now I know this is watertight around the edge because Patch doesn't do as consistent of a job. So that's pretty super fun. We'll hide that. Move. Have I explained to y'all like why move is important, especially if I'm drawing curves? Hmm. Not so much. Let me think of a good example to show you. I 
kind of need a solid back. This is why the move command is so important. I took that off for a reason. How do I get it back? Either I can check all my four views and come in and scoot and come in and scoot. And eventually I'll get it right. But if you want to move something, <laughs> it sounds terribly simple. I don't want to use the near command because it kind of be arbitrary. There's a, the start and finish line. There's a start and finish line. So if you want to move surfaces to another surface and make a solid, the move command is going to save your life. Copy, just that. Rotate, same thing as the rotate button down here. Rotate 3D is interesting. I've only used it a, hand, a handful of times when you're working with something with the complex angles. Let's rotate this. And it's going to let me to find the axis. So let's rotate it through here. I try to avoid doing this because you end up either losing your mind or getting it in such an angle that you can't work with. But every once in a while if you're doing something with complex geometric angles and you can't like rotate it to, to 90 or to 45, rotate 3D be helpful. Scale, great, shear, just, just that, shears it. Neat, Haven't, I don't have any practical purposes for it. Mirror, I really wish there was a mirror button in real life. That would make everything so much easier. Mirror as that. Symmetry, very similar. Align and orient, I don't use either one of these, but array, array is awesome. Let me show you why. I want to put a slight angle on this and I'm going to make a, a wreath maybe a wreath of abstracted conch shells I don't I don't know what that is but I'm going to define me a curve and we're going to array this along a curve and then I'll get a square and array along a square first things first I want to array Along curve, select my object, enter, select my curve. How many objects do I want? Five. So if you want to do something with a lot of detail without spending time to measure them out, array is very good. Even more impressive, like that is just figuring out how many you can do inside of a 360 degree space, but its ability to array within a rectangle, crazy awesome. Let's do three in the X direction, two in the Y direction, just one in the Z. Oh, you want me to find it now? Sure, go for it. Even better. I like drawing out my curves. You can tell it to do a polar array and then to find the circle or a rectangle array and then to find the rectangle. That's why I like drawing out first. That way I understand the input going in. Let's array this guy, this curve, uh, seven. Great fun for everybody. Twist, bend, and taper. These two will allow you to cheat, and I'm going to do an entire lesson on those. It'll be a lot like using Grasshopper. Does anybody here know about Grasshopper? It's an add-on for Rhino. It makes it allows you to make pretty sweet stuff. Twist, bend, taper. I want to get pyramid. Let's do five sides. get out of here so I know what I'm doing. All right, simple attractive pyramid. And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna throw a curved or filleted edge on the entire thing. Five might be a bit big and it is. Let's go back with the three. 
Sweet. And... Cool. Join in case they didn't join. First one's first twist. I want to start from the base. Good. Up through. First reference angle. Simple, fast, and you're able to do geometry that would take a long time to do just from curves to surfaces to solids. Let's put a bend on this. Come on, top, need your help. Unable to join surfaces, which means it's uh, the tolerance isn't as tight as it should be. Real fast. Those points, so oh Lord, not all these points. Good. And I wish it would give me the option not to do any simplification, but I'm going to have to go with it because we're running out of time today. So a bend, just like to everybody. I'd like to start from the middle, middle. That'll work. Of course, the more articulation you add to it, the more complex it gets. And another quick thing about the bend command, it'll only bend as much as you instruct it to bend. Let's take some of these off. So now the top's going to bend less, and the bottom section's going to bend more. And real fast on taper. Taper in, taper out. I mean, you are really to, able to play around with shapes in a very fun and quick way.